Hello, sacred souls. It's Susanna from Alemanic Shaman. What I have here tonight is a continuation or follow-up on yesterday's ceremony. There was a bunch of stuff happening with the wax figurines and how they burnt down. And um, based on that, uh, we're going to do a healing today for the Divine Feminines that are still being blocked or there's still a barrier. Um, there's also a bit of stuff going on with the Divine Masculine, but uh, I'm guided to actually start with the Divine Feminine today. And I'm still receiving some stuff about the Divine Masculine there, but um, I'm going to tell you what I have so far, and um, I'm pretty sure that's the part that I'll focus on there. But anyhow, um, so first things first, um, actually, let me show you this tray. So the left side was the Divine Masculine candle and the right side, the Divine Feminine candle where I had them facing away, cut the dark cord, and then made them face each other, right? So that any and all obstacles that were still in the way and keeping them separate shall now be removed and bring them together. Now, what I saw here, what stood out to me first and foremost was that one of the ancestors of the Divine Feminines had blood. So, like bleeding in the sense of like emotional bleeding and that is contaminating that is still contaminating the divine feminines so like there's still emotional stuff that needs to heal that is still like hurt pain and suffering carried from like passed down from the lineage right so passed down from the mother who got it from the grandmother and so on right so that's going on here then here there Im immediately I felt like there was like a wall still so like emotionally still having a wall up so the divine feminines still have a wall up and this I felt was a reptilian um, that's involved there now this kind of looks like a crocodile but I also got the sense of like it could be a dark um, dragon right um, but either way, like reptilian. And it's funny, I actually didn't notice this until now. This is almost like a ring here, if you look there. Um, I don't know how well you can see that. Let me see if I can turn it in a way that you can see it better. I think you can sort of see it there, right? Um, and then here on the side of the Divine Masculine, I was getting the sense of a crab. And here I was getting the sense of that that's the tail but that looks more like a scorpion's tail but since I felt it was a crab I actually checked it out online and there's a type of lobster larvae of the European lobster that has a similar looking tail so it can also refer to that I think that might be it but there's also something about the stinger or the like the the stinging tail of the scorpion so there's still some kind of danger in that sense like the stinging right like um in the sense of a scorpion will always be a scorpion so like if you um do you remember that tale of i think it was a turtle sorry i i actually didn't look that up again beforehand but um there's a story where i'm pretty sure it was a turtle or some animal brought the scorpion across the river and made it promise beforehand that it wouldn't sting but it did it anyway and then the other animal said well why did you sting me like we're not even across yet and and i'm bringing you across here and the scorpion said i can't help it like i'm a scorpion right so there's still something to that the the stinging part and the sense of still maybe emotionally lashing out right like that that part is not healed yet um but let me also look sorry my notes are like super scribbly so i'm just gonna kind of read it to you so while it was burning down actually the first thing that stood out to me was what i mentioned in the tape 
uh, in the recording that the all the wax was running down the spine of the divine masculine and that started to turn into and, and started to look more and more like um a merman and that made me think of like a mix between a dolphin and a man or a person right um i did actually see a documentary where someone uh showed a creature that looked like it was almost a hybrid but um it that person actually um theorized that like if like a million years ago or whatever humans went into the water and eventually they would adapt so much that they would look kind of like that because that creature looked like it had a head and it looked like the arms had merged with the body right so um it was actually very interesting and that was the sense i was getting right so like merman dolphin human hybrid and then later it looked like um angel wings and what came to mind was a dolphin stands for joy and happiness and lightheartedness, right? So that's what the divine masculine is going to bring into that divine union, that joy and happiness, that lightheartedness of that inner child. And for the divine feminine candle, um, oh, I put two S's there, sorry. It's like when I wrote it down, I was still sort of half asleep. Um or I was already, I don't remember now. But anyway, um, so with the Divine Feminine, the wax was running down the front. It was running right over the bell, the chest and belly area. And I felt that had to do with the femininity and um, pregnancy and all of that. And then it was super long and it almost looked like the left arm. It, and it was... The sense I was getting was that like the arm wanted to reach out to the divine masculine, right? And um, then it looked like the divine feminine had like a hood in the back. So almost like it almost sort of a medieval looking hood, kind of like Robin Hood. And I felt that it had to do with like, oh no, wait a minute. Yeah, something about like um, being free, like fighting for what's right in a sense. Then the ancestor blood I already mentioned, emotional bleeding. Ah, uh, yes, and the barrier. So the, the wall, the emotional wall. And here we have the reptilian blocking, which like we all have sort of reptilian aspects within us, right? So... Um, as I mentioned, th what I want to focus on today is like healing more of that divine feminine stuff that came up. Um, but what what's also very interesting is f yesterday and today I had this ABBA song stuck in my head, The Winner Takes It All. And um, I printed them out, but I think it might be hard for you to see all of it. And I don't want to like focus on all the lyrics, but most of the lyrics apply quite well. And what I feel very strongly is that it relates to the karmics that have been trying to stop the divine union from happening, from the divine partners coming together. Um, they're at a point where they are accepting defeat right, where they're realizing they can't stop it. Even if, let's say, we're not getting together with our divine partner tomorrow, but the energies are shifting in a way that now we can get together. So this could happen next week, next month, in a few months, but it's like everything is starting to shift so that it can happen, right? And... Uh, basically, like the main thing that stood out is the winner takes it all, the loser standing small beside the victory. That's her destiny, right? So the karmics can't stop destiny from happening, right? So they have to realize they've lost. So that's a very important part. And please do check out all the lyrics. I, I thought I might actually read other parts. But almost everything applies. And I feel like this is also um, representative of how 
in 3D society with all the karmic behavior that is very common and that's how most of 3D society functions, right? Is all about like power games and struggles. It's like, um, especially like dating and so on. It's a game, right? It's like the ball is in your court and then like the other person has to take the next step. And it's, it's like playing a game. And if you play it right, you win, right? And that's exactly what we don't want anymore in the new world, right? We, we want to be able to simply be honest and direct and be able to open ourselves up without having to put on a facade to wear a mask in the um, figurative sense and pretend to be someone we're not so that the other person feels attracted to us or to to play games um, of like, uh, what's it called? That you kind of say and do the opposite of what you mean and want. Let's say you push the other person away so that they d desire you stronger because they realize they've lost you and then they come after you and all of that kind of stuff. That's all the toxic karmic energies, right? Like if someone is secure within themselves, that doesn't work, right? It's like, if you want to play games with me, get lost and play them with someone else who's in the same energies as you. But it's like, I'm not wasting my time with this, right? So, um, yeah, so this is a really good sign because we are shifting into this healthier way of relating to others and with others, right? Now, what I did to represent what's happening here with the Divine Feminines is I put some blocks here to represent the emotional wall. Um, I should actually turn this around so that it actually faces the Divine Masculine. Um, and this shall represent the Divine Feminine and this the, the toxic reptilian energies that are still present. And I'm going to cut this cord. Um, but also, like, the way this mannequin was attached to the packaging, which was just a cardboard behind it, was with these zip ties. And I, every time, basically, I feel like it's almost like, um, it reminds me of slavery and slave times. And, you know, how um, it's like, it's a lack, it expresses a lack of freedom, right? You're tied, you're, you're tied down, you're it's almost like a collar for a dog or how back in the days slaves were held sometimes, right? Um, and then here around the waist, that's also like our solar plexus, right? So like not being free there, not totally being in our power, right? That someone else has power over us. So I shall cut all of that. And I'm just wondering if we need another portal closing and maybe some, give me one second I'm gonna quickly run and grab it but also what I did I didn't have a chance to get more candles and I kind of ran out so I reused I melted down the wax from the last few candles that I had um, left over from like the last few ceremonies and I had a bit of wax left aside from like other stuff so I actually made this candle and, and if anybody ever wants to do that I just used a coffee cup, see? And um, this one I left so I can show you. Um, very simple. Just melt down the old wax. You just need a wick for the center, which um, I insert after the wax starts hardening, right? And then I kind of poke a hole and then insert it. Otherwise, it gets too wobbly. And then you need a second pour, sometimes a third one, because it dimples down in the middle. Okay, but that said, I'm going to quickly grab a roll of empty toilet paper for the portal closing. Give me one sec. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. So I'm going to have this and if needed, I have an empty piece of paper here. If I feel guided to cut another soul contract, I may me do that. 
Um, the knife is here. Actually, I'll put that here. Um, and I think that's it. I think we can get started. Oh, yes. And since um, a lot of those karmic energies are also like snake energies, I'm using the snake pipe. I want to use that for smudging at the end here to smudge our figurine that represents us. And since I don't smoke, I'm using sage, right? And I think that's it now. All right, so let's smudge. Okay. Oh yeah, and I'm gonna cut the the head of the reptile reptilian off. Um, I forgot that. <laughs> okay, please cleanse, clear, and renew all of our energies, and flood us with massive amounts of healing light, unconditional love, blessings, and protection from the divine, and. Burn away and transmute anything that are dark, lower, and lower vibrational energies and anything toxic and dark. I think I said dark already. <laughs> okay. And so it is. Thank you. Thank you for all my relations. All right. Dear Creator, Higher Power, Source and Soul Energy, our Higher Selves, our Higher Spirit Guides of the Light, our Ancestors that are in the Light, Dear Mother Earth and Powers of all four directions, Powers of the East, Powers of the South, Powers of the West, Powers of the North, Powers of all four elements, Air, Earth, Fire and Water. And all other, whoops, sorry, all other benevolent powers, forces, spirits, and beings of the universe that are of the light, of the multiverse, that are of the light, please join the ceremony and assist the healings, prayers, banishings, and protection with all of your powers. Thank you. Please close the circle of protection around us. Thank you. Okay. While I was calling them in, I felt guided to also use get the swan feather so the purity representing the angels right with the white feather so ah, just put it right over the divine union here right this way <sighs> okay i ask for all of our divine feminines for healing any and all remaining hurt, pain, suffering, trauma, PTSD, CPTSD, and anything else that is still blocking us from coming together with our divine masculine partner or again if it's a same-sex relationship then with the divine partner in general um, I ask that any and all blocks barriers and emotional walls that we have around us may they be from within ourselves or from outside influences let them all be removed and torn down we shall all be fully and completely removed. And how oh, interesting. I feel like I want to do that symmetrically. And oh, pointing out. Okay. All right. Sorry. Give me one second. It's like I have these feelings a lot of times on, on how I need to do it. So I just got to follow that. 
Okay, that's it. So that's kind of like a cross as well, which represents the medicine wheel, although it's actually outside, but just for safety, I don't want to have it like inside where the candle is, right? But it should, should still symbolize that. So I call on all of our ancestors to help us, to give us a very strong shamanic healing through the astral realm, through the spirit world, a strong energetic healing that heals our bloodline, our lineage, that still has a lot of pain represented by the blood of that one ancestor here from yesterday's ceremony. Let all that pain that we still carry in our heart space be removed and cast into the light for healing and to be transmuted into divine love light energy and returned to a source for reintegration. And actually that's why the color of the candle is also sort of pink reddish, pinkish more, sort of an earth. It's actually, I did two pores, so the bottom is a little bit different than the top part, a little bit more earthy. Ah, thank you, which represents more our connection to Mother Earth, which helps us heal. And then the top, more pinkish part is our heart space. So our heart, heart space is healing through the connection with Mother Nature. Thank you. Wow. And let any and all portals and gateways that connected us to those toxic energies now be closed by healing all of that. Let any and all vows and soul contracts be healed. Ah, it's cutting better now. Or maybe I'm getting the hang of it. Whoops, I spoke too soon. Ah, good enough. Let any and all vows and soul contracts be cut and finished, be declared nil, void, completed, and done. It is no longer wanted or needed, and those dark ones shall no longer benefit from us and our light. <coughs> and here comes the throat again, the throat chakra. They're still trying to stop that a bit, but no luck there. And we shall be freed from all bonds that kept us bound to these dark contracts, to the reptilian overlords, and all dark cords, bonds, shackles, chains, leashes, and karmic connections, and connections otherwise, shall now and forever be, and including umbilical dark umbilical cords shall now and forever be cut severed finished and removed throughout all of time and space throughout all lifetimes timelines parallel and alternate realms realities multi and universes and any and all other aspects that affect us in this lifetime and moving forward and so it is thank you thank you and all my relations so i quickly knotted this like you would uh, an umbilical cord so that the infant you know can properly be disconnected without leaking out energy in this case right that we don't leak out energy but after a while like anything that's still there falls off so that shall be represented by me cutting it off and we shall be fully and completely freed from that. And this reptilian, we're just going to cut it close, but it can keep parts of the cord. We don't care, or I don't care. <laughs> um, that's their issue to heal, not ours, but the cord shall be cut into small pieces. And any and all 
Oh, actually, I feel guided to snap the neck rather than cut it with an axe. I actually put the camera down so you can see that. Because since it is late at night, I kind of padded it so it wouldn't be too noisy. But um, let any and all reptilian influences in our lives now and forever be dead and finished and removed. And again, that shall be applied throughout all of time and space, throughout all lifetimes, timelines, parallel and alternate realms, realities, multi and universes, and any and all other aspects that affect us in this lifetime and moving forward. And so it is. Thank you. Danke schön, all my relations. Oh, and let's add that it shall be applied to our whole lineages. And with that, um, especially our maternal lineage or lineages, but also any paternal lineages that have influenced all of that and that still need to be healed and cleared and so it is thank you danke schön all my relations okay and we're gonna have that one gone and done and it shall be finished Oh, this feels good. Ooh. Oh, I feel... Oh, the energy feels liberating. I feel liberated now energetically. Wow. Whew. Yeah, that was good. Oh, okay. Mm. Mm. Wow, and I feel like I need to do a figure eight, which is like our soul, it's eternity, right? Oops, sorry, I'm standing next to the tripod, so it's a little awkward here. And that also represents the divine working with us, working in harmony with us, and having it all interwoven Having, oh wow, yes, having our awareness interwoven with Source, with our ancestors, with our spirit guides. It's like we're weaving and strengthening the connection. Oh, yeah. Oh. And so it is. The connection is now woven and solidified. It's like we have now consciously made that connection on a soul level. And so it is. All my relations. We're now blessed and in our divine purpose.
Okay, we are now fully divinely safe, shielded, and protected. We're healed and we're in our divine purpose. We are ready and open to meet our divine partner. And so it is. Thank you. Danke schön. All my relations. Ooh. Ooh, wow. Okay. Okay, everyone. If you'd like to stay in these energies a bit longer, then please pause the video. For everyone else, let the ceremony now be finished. And we thank all of our spirit guides and the divine, our ancestors, all light beings that we had called in earlier. We want to express our love, thanks, gratitude to you. And may you be blessed in return. And let the ceremony now be finished. Thank you. Danke schön, all my relations. Please open the circle of protection around us, but keep us strongly safe, shielded, and protected. And so it is. Thank you. Danke schön, all my relations, all our relations. Whew. Oh, wow. There's something about the eyes, too. I can kind of feel my eyes burning a little bit. But I think, because that's been happening on and off for a while, there's something about how they also didn't want us to see certain things. They, I mean the dark, right? So we are now, our sight, our vision shall be restored as well. And if, even though it's not fully a part of the ceremony anymore, but sort of as a as an addendum <laughs> let's put it that way but i can also do another ceremony at some point for that i'll write it down so i won't forget and if not somebody please comment <laughs> okay um thank you so much everybody for watching for being a part of the ceremony and for being on your own healing and ascension path being on the journey is very special we're the way showers we, we have the light that will then guide others. So thank you so much. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, share and subscribe. And I'm also sending you tons of love, light and blessings. Be well until next time. And I wish you great abundance. Be well. Bye.